Blessed good night, one and all. We greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. And we join with the psalmist and declares, It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Tonight we give God thanks for his loving kindness and truly his faithfulness as we rejoice to see how God has preserved us. He has touched us since the very first day in January. Amen. And here we are in the month of September, still here in the land of the living, still full of strength in our bodies. Amen. We recognize that this thing is just the goodness of God. Amen. It's about his faithfulness. It's about his loving kindness. And surely we return the praise, the honor, the glory, and all the majesty to this awesome God that we serve because everything belongs and comes to us through him. We greet you tonight, as we said, this is Rebuilders of the Walls broadcast, brought to you by the Good Inlet Tabernacle, located in Marshall and Parkinson Gap, Fairfield, Crossroad, Cuter Bridge. And truly, we are glad to be in the studio again tonight to declare God's truth to you. Tonight, we want to continue to remember those of our brothers and sisters in our neighboring Bahamas. We recognize that they have been going through uh, much uh, trepidation, much danger over the past days. And we want to let you see, and so maybe listening to let you know that you are in our prayers. We're yeah. still holding the hand of God yeah. up this side and right. joining with you, believing that God is a great God, He's a deliverer, and He's able to take you through this very challenging time in your Christian journey. Yes. And they right. encourage all of our brothers across the Caribbean and those who are under the hearing our voices to join with us as we unite in prayer because we recognize that prayer has power and that we serve a God who's able to bring change, is able to bring deliverance, he's able to set free, and he's able to show his peace and grace even in the midst of a storm. So God bless and strength for you tonight, even as you're tuning to this radio broadcast. Before we get to the word of God, we're going to invite our Pastor Carter to give a word of greetings to the listeners out there. Pastor Carter. So thank you, Pastor John. It's good to be here in the studio another time. We are giving God thanks. We are giving them praise. We recognize the hand of God all upon our lives, upon our nation. Amen. As we pray, as that uh, talk, strong approach that we pray and ask the Lord to, to shift it. We recognize that God has been doing this for us over, over the years. Some folks have believed that we are especially located and so we, you know, uh, we see the kind of danger. But even if that is the case, we have been God. And, in, in the right Amen. Amen. where we are. Yes. We're going to give it we're going to pray for those that are going through their, their hardship instead of our, our neighbors in the Bahamas. We're going to pray for them and lift them up. We also want to remember our members that support the great program, the members of the Dynamic Tabernacle, the ones that sponsor this program Monday after Monday. Pray on the Lord will be bless them as they are listening tonight. Pray the Lord will bless you all in the name of Jesus and give him thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. For his Lord, we continue to, to give thanks for all those who continue to follow us on the Facebook page and those who tune in over the local radio station. We bless you in the wonderful name of Jesus. I trust that you will continue to hold us up in your prayers Amen. because we recognize that prayer indeed has power and that ministry is fueled by prayer. So we thank you for your continuous support, even your encouraging words that you send from time to time to encourage us in the ministry. And those, as we said, who continues to remember this radio broadcast. And not just here, the Revealers of the Walls broadcast, but who remember the work of God in prayer. We thank God for all your intercessors out there. And we bless you with the blessing of God that make us rich and out of no sorrow. Our apostle is going to share God's word tonight. We know that God has spoken to him and given him something for you. And we trust that you will get your tablets, your Bibles, wherever, wherever you have the word of God on tonight, and that you will follow along and that you will be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor John. Greetings to our Pastor Carter with us in the studio. Amen. Well, truly, our hearts go out to our brothers and our sisters, and not only those who are our brothers and sisters, but people on the whole. Yes. And we continue to lift them up in our prayers. Amen. Amen. I want to do a two part series beginning from tonight, looking at prophetic gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. Somehow the Holy Spirit has brought this topic back into my heart and I want to begin it tonight. I will sort of bring it to a conclusion next Monday night, God's willing. Amen. But I think it is important because I'm encouraging those of us who mandate, those of us who stand and pray and seek the Lord even concerning our nation. I want to encourage you to continue to do so Amen. and Amen. that we do not lapse in doing it because it's through the praise 
of the saints and those who are manning the gates that God is able to protect. Amen. God is able to shield yes. his people from harm and from danger. And I want to say it is a blessing. It is a blessing to have in every nation, men and women, young and old, who are prophetically knowledgeable about the issue concerning the gates and also concerning altars. Yes. We see that there are certain groups who seem to know better than the sons of light in this area, but this ought not to be so. That is why there are certain groups who would go to length breath to occupy these particular important areas because they know the importance of doing so. But our prayer is that as we go through, that you'll be enlightened and that you will be able to sufficiently function as strong prophetic gatekeepers yes. for the nation of Barbados and those yeah. even who are listening in the region, this knowledge will serve you well that you'll be able to position yourself and also stand as a gatekeeper for your nation. Right. First of all, let us define what we mean by the term gate. There are actually four major different meanings of this word gate. First of all, we look at it physically. As we look at it, we understand that a gate physically is an opening on a wall or a fence of a compound or city or castle with defensive structures such as towers, doors, metal bars, etc. Even when you look at your home, those of you that have your home fence, you have a main gate there. And that main gate acts as a protection. Yes. Because if there are no gates, it means that persons can willfully um, traverse or retrofit through that property at their own will. That's right. When we look at it prophetically, it is a position of authority, a position of dominion, a yes. position of control and power. For example, the office of a president within a nation, they have become a gatekeeper in that nation because of the authority that they hold. Yes. The office of a governor, for example, we have a governor general within our country. The office of a managing director even of a company or even the office of a father or husband because he holds that authority within the home. And we see that this was very important even as we look at the Old Testament, even in Genesis chapter 24, verse 60, we see um, after Abraham would have sent his servant to look for a wife, for Isaac, after she was about to leave, there was a prayer that was offered up for her. Yes. And that prayer was that she would have much seed and that her seed will be able to stand within the gates. Yes, amen. And so we pray tonight, and that is what I believe that God desires, is that our seed will be raised as godly seed to be able to stand within the gates and defeat the enemy. Yeah. Also in the book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 15 to 17, when Abraham was about to, um, offer his son or sacrifice him. Is there that the Lord tell him, No, I know that you obey me. Yes. And then he, he saw him, showed him that ram that was caught in the ticket. Then it was there that the Lord pronounced the blessing upon Abraham, a blessing I will bless thee. And he said, I will cause your seed to multiply as the sand of the seashore. Amen. And also was mentioned there that his seed would also possess the gates. And you will get to understand why it is important that godly seed possess the gates. Because they will be able to be spiritually discerned. They will be able to also pray and also be able to push back or to fight against or to subdue or destroy the plans of the enemy. Amen. Amen. Gates were also seen as legally our court of justice. In the book of Exodus chapter 32, 26, we see that Moses judged Aaron and Israel after the calf worship at the gate. You know, they would have seen Moses going up to the mountain. He would have stayed a little longer than expected. And they wanted something that they could bow before. They wanted the God so that they can say, well, this is the God 
that brought us out of Egypt. Oh, and he put off the earrings and the jewelry and, and Aaron built this golden car for them. Mm -hmm. And it, it sort of really hurt the heart of God. Yes. Right. And we see there back in Exodus chapter 32, 26, it was there that Moses, as a servant of God, and that person who was placed in that authority, he was the one who judged them yes. for what they had done. Also, in the book of Ruth 4, 11, we see that legal matters were also handled. We know that Boaz, after Ruth had came back with her mother-in-law, and we see how that she had received favor from Boaz, yes. that he was about yeah. to uh, marry to her. He assembled his elders within the gates, yes, right? and right. he discussed the matter with them. And it was there that the elders, their sanction to this matter of mean the marriage that was supposed to take place. Yes. Right. Also, we see that immoral behaviors were judged at the gate. So what am I saying tonight? That the gates were seen and are very important places of authority. Yes. Right. When a uh, person was married and then another person came and raped that individual, it was at the gates where openly that person who did the, the crime was judged. Yes. And they were made an example there by the elders. Right. And most mostly the elders were those who sat within the gates and they were the ones who made the key decisions. The key decisions and policies for those places at that time. Yes. We see also in the book of Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 14 to 20, that when the gates were rebuilt, and it was on the Sabbath day, people were taking advantage in bringing different stocks and wares and whatever, and they were desecrating the Sabbath, yes. and they were selling and all of that, and it displeased the servant of God, Nehemiah, and it was at the gates no, he might have had to judge this situation and he had to shut it down. Yes. So yes. as to bring back that reverence yes, to the Sabbath. Yeah. We see that it's also a gathering place for the elders and for leadership of a city or state or of a nation. We see in the book of Proverbs 31, 23, when we read of the virtuous woman, her husband, he stood out. Yes. As the word of God said, he stood out within the gates. Amen. He was Amen. a man of renown. Yes. He was one who stood there in authority. We see also in the book of Judges, chapter 4, that it was an assembly of top leaders. Yes. Amen. We have not only men, but we also have women like Deborah, right. who stood there and she judged different cases and different matters under that tree. She stood there and she judged various matters. So we see not only the gate represents something physically, but it also represents something that is spiritual. Yes. And I believe that the spiritual dynamic of it is most important. Amen. Amen. Many of the great men of the Bible were people of the gates, and also their children were raised to be tough at the gates. I pray tonight that you know the Lord will help us that we will instill those values even within our um, children so that they could be raised as tough persons who will be able to stand in the gates that will not be easily walked over, will not be easily swayed, but will stand for moral and to stand for principle Amen. so that the blessings of God be, that can remain on the nation or Amen. on the place Amen. because it is critical and it is important who is manning the gates of a nation. Amen. Amen. In the book of Psalm 127, verse 5, it says, Blessed is the man whose quiver is full. Yes. But it also speaks to the those who would also represent those children. Yes. They will represent God within the gates. Amen. We also read in Genesis chapter 19, verse 1, and I pray you have your tablets, your, your Bibles, and you're following along with me. Yes. That in Genesis 19, 1, when the angel came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, it was there he met Abraham and those there at the gates. Yes, amen. So as to let them know what their mission was. Amen. We also see concerning Mordecai in Esther chapter 4, verse 2, and Esther 6, verse 12, that Mordecai was a man who also stood within the gates. Amen. And God positioned him there so that he would be able to hear 
whatever was going on in the case yes. Sonic, right. and I positioned him there not only to hear, but also to be able to pray and to know what to do. Amen. Because mm -hmm. we read there that there was a, a, an assassination attempt yes. to destroy all of the Jews. And because of where he was positioned, he was able to hear different things that yes. other people would not hear. Yes. And so he was able to warn Esther, give her instructions of what to do, and Esther, through her obedience to her uncle Mordecai, she went into prayer and fasting. Then her maidens calling him out to pray and fast for her. She has to go into the seat of king concerning a very important uh, matter. Want you to pray for me. And we see that as she went in, she was granted favor. Amen. And even though the decree was already signed off, God was able to turn it around Amen. and a new decree was written yes. so that Amen. those Jews could not be destroyed. Amen. How important it is for men and women to stand within the gates. Yes. And we are encouraging you tonight, wherever God has placed you, amen? Even Amen. in the job, I'm getting to that point, even in the job that God has placed, we are not just there to receive money. God has placed you there strategically for a purpose, amen. amen. Yes. It is bigger than the salary that you're receiving. Amen. And God has placed you there and He wants you to have your eyes open, your ears open, to be alert, to be sensitive, and to be able to hear what the Lord is saying to you, so that you'll be able to know how to pray strategically, so that you'll be able even to ward off the plans of the enemy amen. in yes. the name of Jesus, yes, just as Mordecai did. We also see Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, verse 49. After he had explained the dream to the king concerning the statue, we see that God, through his favor, was able to promote Daniel in a place of authority. Yes, and amen. many gifts and different things were given to him yes. where he was able to stand within the gates. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 13. 17 to 22 tells us also that at the gates, as we have mentioned before, Nehemiah was able to command the respect for the Sabbath at the gates. Amen. It is at the gates, I want to say to you tonight, that battles are won. Yes. And every time that we are losing the battle, it means we are losing the battle at the gates where the authority and dominion is. That is why I'm encouraging us, even as we're going through this season here with hurricanes and different disasters, God expects us to stand at the gates. Yes. To pray and to intercede for our nation and the nations beyond. Amen? Amen. And to see the hand of God work because he is depending on godly gatekeepers Amen. to do it. Yes. So that the will of God can be achieved or the will of God can be manifested within these nations Amen. and that the enemy of our souls will not wreak havoc because when there are righteous men within the gate you have to understand it is that the gateway policy is made right. it is that the gateway key decisions are made yes. Yes. it is that the gate where is a life or death situation yes. and if godly seed or godly people are not there then the enemy, then the gates are open then to the enemy oh, to destroy. That is why I'm thankful amidst everything that is happening within this nation that we still have godly men and amen. women yes. standing in the gates. Yes. That is why we could have prayed to the Lord. Amen. amen. When we see the system coming, I believe that all over this nation amen. from St. Lucy to Christ Church, yes. there were godly men and women right. interceding yes. to the Lord, asking him for mercy. Amen. And the Lord came through. Amen. Remember when uh, Abraham was interceding for Son, yes, and then right. he said, Lord, even if it's 50, that's and right. he bring him down, yes. Huh? And we see that I do believe that there are godly people, yes, who are standing and understanding, oh, hallelujah, amen. amen. That will stand, and even when the enemy will want to come in like a flood because of those praise that is going up to heaven, yes. amen. Because right. of the alertness and the understanding, you know, you don't, you know what to do yes. in certain times of adversity, amen. In the name of Jesus, I am praying that the men of the gates, the women of the gates, even those that are young would arise up, amen, amen, with that understanding that God has called you
for a particular purpose. Amen. And I want you to fulfill that purpose in the name of Jesus Amen. so that we can continue to win some more battles at the gates yes. in the name of Jesus. We see that God is very interested of those who are at the gates. Yes. When there are evil gates, evil gates opens up the, the place to death, to destruction, to evil, and to all of these things. And that is why the gatekeepers have to be aware so that they can pray that these evil gates can be shut. Yes. Not, all, not only are there gates of authority and dominion and, and the different ones that I've explained to you, but you have to also understand that there are also personal gates, yes. personal gates which uh, concern you. You look at your body and every opening on it represents a gate, and I'm speaking now spiritually, huh? yeah, yeah. represents a gate spiritually. And God expects us also to man those gates in our person, whether it's the eyes, whether it's the mouth, whether it's the nose, every opening on the body, the ears, the crown of our heads, the palm of our hands, our umbilical cord, our reproductive organs, the sole of our feet, our anus, those are openings on our bodies that we have to man what enters into those areas will depend on what will happen or the consequences yes. within us as persons. I want you to take knowledge of that as well. And so there are also the family gates. The family gates which also to be man. Just as we said earlier up that a husband or father, that person has an authority, can also man the home. Yes. which is called a family gate. Amen. And how do you mind that family gate? It's very important. That is why many families are crying out uh, because the adversary is reaping rampage in those families because nobody is there manning those gates. Nobody is manning those gates of what is coming in and nobody is manning those gates what is going out. It's very important, you see? And then we will have a situation where families are being destroyed or the enemy is battering them because nobody has this kind of understanding, this mm -hmm. kind of knowledge, it is very important. Yes. So even within the family gates, the spiritual aspect has to be monitored. Huh? Mm -hmm. Places of worship by the members of the family. Mm -hmm. Are your family involved in anything occultic? Because you have to understand that the gate is an opening. If it is open to anything that is evil, then you're giving Satan an advantage. Oh, Lord. You're giving Satan an upper hand. So right. you'll be crying out and wondering, why, why, why are we so miserable? Why are we having all these problems? Why is uh, uh, the enemy coming to our families like this? It's because you just see it as a house. You just see it as maybe some siblings, some children there, but it's, more, it is, it's, a, it's a spiritual dimension to everything in life. Yes. Right. And the spiritual dimension many people overlook. But we want you, or uh, want to bring an awareness so that you'll be able to understand these spiritual dimensions in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Amen. social type also has to be monitored. The type of people and the social activities your family members connect to. With the type of movies and the type of films they watch. Hmm? Anytime that that open is, is there for the adversary. He will enjoy that. My Lord. And he will come in just as he has been doing, reaping rampage and destroying families. But God does not want that. It is not God who does that. It's a lack of knowledge. And that is why the Bible says that my people are destroyed wow. for a lack of knowledge. Lord. And so I encourage those of you in authority and leadership position with your, within your homes to take back your authority. Amen. Stand in the place where God has positioned you. Amen. And ask him to give you the wisdom and the understanding how to man those family gates so that you will see your home becoming a place of peace, yes, not amen. just a house or a ranch, but a Lord. place where God can Habitate, a place amen. where God can dwell. Yes, amen. amen. A place amen. where God can bless. Yes, amen. A place where you can enjoy the blessings of God. That is what God desires. Yes. But if you don't, if you don't do the things that are required, 
then you have to expect the consequences. And it goes as far as who are your service providers. Sometimes we take so light of many things. You know, we just, we just sometimes we just do things. Even sometimes, I will draw an example, we may have, a, 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 you, you, there's a doctor and somebody introduce you. You don't make checks. You don't ask questions. But if somebody said to you, oh, he's a wonderful um, person. But you don't make checks. You have to be very careful with persons who are tampering and who have to deal with your body. Right. These are things that you need to know. Make sure you make your checks because there's so much evil that is happening in the world today. Right. Mm. That if you expose yourself to the wrong person, Lord. you may very lose your very life. Right. And so you have to be cognizant of the fact that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, right. but against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. Yes, yes. And you know, some people are just blinded to these things. Oh, Lord. But we want to open up your understanding, cause you to think. I pray tonight, even as I'm going through this part, one with you that you'll begin to think. Yes. yes. So, what is this part that this apostle talking about? I never heard such. Yes. We want your, your mind to be stirred up. Yes. And amen. you begin to think because people are just taking things just at surface value and just, you know, just moving through, just living. And that's what the enemy loves. He loves when people are blinded to the truth. And he is able to come in and take an advantage. And, yes. and the word of God tells us that he comes to reward, steal, yes. kill. And, and so when he when, when he is finished, he's not going to leave anything. He wants to destroy. That is why we have such a fight. Even within this time for the family life, yes. is the enemy who has an agenda to destroy marriage, yes. to destroy the home. And that is why the gatekeepers there has to be sensitive, have to be open to the Spirit of God. This is not a, what I want for my home. Amen? Amen. Be like a Joshua that will say, as for me and my house. This yes. is, the, this is the, the standard and this is the, uh, what the, the bar that I am raising. As for me and my house, Satan. You will not have authority here. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. You have to Amen. be like a Noah that found grace in the eyes of God. Yes. A, a, a wonderful gatekeeper. When everybody else was doing as they are pleased and what they are like, the Bible says, no found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And God was able, even though he was going to send a flood, to, to, to provide protection yes. for Noah, amen, yes. that yes. he and his family could be saved. Amen. And so amen. this is the awareness, amen, that I want to bring to our minds I, tonight. And to next week, Monday, God's spare lives, I want to continue on the second part, and I want to go a little deeper so that you will get a better understanding of what we talk about when we mean prophetic gatekeepers. And for those of you that you are here concerning these things tonight and you want to know more, we have the Minister's Prayer Network, which is every third Saturday of the month. We meet at our church, Golden Lake Tabernacle, at 5 p.m., where we train, amen, where we go into the deep things, amen, no surface level, but deep teachings that people need to know. Amen. And it has benefited us tremendously, and I know that it will benefit you also tremendously. So any one of you out there, you can give the office a call, 622-1934. And we also have the email. You can reach us at gltabernacle at gmail.com. We'll be willing to hear from you because the Lord doesn't want in this season and this spirit that we are in to be to have us as just service Christians. Right. We'll be an easy knockover for the enemy. Lord. But when we have the knowledge, just like the sons of Issachar, understanding the times, not only understanding the times, but knowing what to do. Amen. 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 How to be armed as a child of God. This is what will help you to stand. So I encourage you, be with us next Monday night, God's going to hear in the second part. God bless you richly and your families. Shalom. Amen. Amen. Amen.